Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of SNS. And so this week I've got some exciting news to share with you, some shop related news. And later in the video, we're gonna have some content going over some of the uh, metrology, which is uh, comparing some uh, Chinese, some inexpensive Chinese imported tools to some Sterrett tools. It was, a, it was an idea that was kind of given to me by a viewer, so we go into that. And then later towards the end of the video, we uh, this past weekend we took a few days off and uh, Abby and I went over to Mississippi, take a little time off and, and go to the Astena Space Center over there. But we stopped off in Ocean Springs and, and had a little you know adventure over there. So I got a little bit of video to share with you. That's gonna be towards the end of the video. And then we've also got a new project that I started this past week. We got a machining project, the, the LeBlanc lathe cross feed nut we, we got that started so that's going to be a separate episode after this sns so be on the lookout for that and we're going to try to finish that out next week all right so but i've got some exciting news that i want to share with you and talk about for just a minute before we get into our content there and that is i have i have struck a deal with a contractor to start the enclosure of the shop out there the, you know we got the we had the roof built onto the shop a couple years ago well I made a plan to try to get to the point where I could get that enclosed and and I decided to go ahead and and get started on that so I found a contractor and me and him went back and forth talking and he sounds like a, a very motivated contractor and he sent me lots of pictures of his work that he's done and we were able to negotiate pricing and kind of get into the uh, the range, you know, the, the budget that I had set in mind for doing that work out there. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna be bringing you some video of the work that's being done out there. I know I'm very excited about this. Um, it's gonna be kind of like having a whole new shop, you know? So it's gonna be a completed project. It ain't gonna be just uh, putting some studs up and having a wall, it's gonna be a completed project. It's gonna have a wall, entry door, roll up door. It's gonna be insulated. We're gonna have a ceiling. You know, the, the, the wall's gonna be completely insulated and it'll have electrical run out there with lighting and some receptacles for uh, 220 power, which will be for the, uh, the bandsaw and the welders and that kind of stuff. The one thing that, that we're not gonna do right off the bat is the three phase power because I don't know where the machines are gonna set. I'm gonna have the pedestal grinder to put out there and we've got the crankshaft press out there to three phase. I don't know where that stuff's gonna go yet. So to try to keep the price down some in the budget that I was looking for, we decided to just hold off on the three phase power and we're gonna come back and do that after everything else is completed. But it'll be a complete job. I'll be able to flip a light switch on and have it all lit up. We're gonna paint the wall out there, you know. I'm I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be a it's gonna be exciting to see that take place. So as I said, I'm gonna bring you some video of the progress that you know that happens every day. So be on the lookout. Hopefully next Saturday, next SNS, I'll have some updated video for you to share with the progress that's being made out there on the shop. So stay tuned for that. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the rest of our content I got ready for you and, and be on the lookout for another project video after this SNS. And I just want to, again, thank all my supporters out there, you know, even my viewers here on YouTube, you know, all you guys contribute to this and all of my patron supporters out there, all of that, all of that support that I get from Patreon is going to that addition out there. Every bit of it is going out there and some. So. Uh, Patreon, I always shared a link in the video, got it up here. If you want to go over there and kick in a buck to help out around here, I'd really appreciate it. So I hope you guys enjoy this week's video. So I think what we're going to do f this week for SNS is we're going to do a little bit more of the tr metrology. We're going to check out some dial calipers and some micrometers. It's been, a, it's been a subject that every time I bring it up it seems to bring a lot of curiosity, a lot of questions, and a, and a lot of interest out there. And I'm not one to claim to be an expert on metrology. I uh, just, you know, I have to use calipers and mics and things like that every single day to do my job. Uh, for me, I'm not into the ultra high precision, you know, having to read tents and chase tents every day. That's just not what I do. You know, usually within a half thousandths is, is about where I'm at on my measurements. 
but I have a viewer and he goes by the name of JT and he sent me a couple tools here and I'll tell you got a little letter right here and what he says is enclosed is a zero to one inch Chinese micrometer with an anvil set that you can buy on eBay for around fifteen dollars also a Chinese dial caliper which is about the same price for those guys starting out on a limited budgets it would be nice to compare these to your Sterrett's so they have an idea on how accurate the low cost stuff is and decide which is best for their purposes so JT makes a good point you know it's a subject that is always out there in the chatter on the forums on Facebook YouTube comments things like that there's a lot of choices out there and and one of the things I just want to say is that what's awesome about having so many choices is that we get to pick what we like all right I like Sterrett all the guys that watch me know that I like Sterrett tools I don't claim that Sterrett makes the best of everything but they make a good quality tool and they have a very nice heritage to them that's one of the reasons why I like Sterrett you know they're they were born and bred in the USA they're still here in the USA making tools and my granddad used Sterrett tools my dad used his Sterrett tools you know that's one of the reasons why I like Sterrett so I don't I don't claim that Sterrett is the best there's other good brands out there I like Brown and Sharp and there's there's many other companies out there Lufkin made some top quality tools there was a lot of high quality tools made you know in the past decades you know in a time that's that's gone now in this day and age of cheap imported tools but everybody gets to make a choice on what they on what they think is good for them everybody has a different budget to work with and tools are just like anything else out there that you would compare you know buy a cheap quality to a high quality you know maybe I like to wear Nike shoes you know but maybe somebody else likes to wear shoes that you buy at Kmart or Walmart I don't like those shoes because I like Nike we all get to make a choice all right and that's what's great about having so many choices that we get to pick what we want <laughs> but anyway JT sent in these calipers and a mic and there's an anvil set there so I'm gonna take his suggestion and we're gonna look at my Sterrett tools here and we're going to compare it to these Chinese ones right here and see how they measure up. I got a gauge block here. We got a Michitoya one inch gauge block that we'll use to compare them all and we'll see what we see. So these are really inexpensive tools for guys that are on a low budget that need to have some kind of measuring tools. I recommend whatever you can afford to buy. If you can't buy an expensive brand, a name brand tool, then you can definitely look at things. There's plenty of options for made in China stuff, and I'm sure a lot of them are made probably in the same factories, but I don't know who makes what. Fowler is another good name that you can look at that's made in China, you know, it's imported, and they seem to be pretty pretty good quality tools as well. So I'm gonna bring the, the other camera in so you can get a nice close-up tight shot, and I'll show you what JT sent in, and we'll do some comparisons on the gauge block right here. So we'll start off by checking out these tools that JT sent in. So this is going to be the six inch dial caliper right here. And he says that you can find this on eBay for about $15. And I think this is like some kind of new old stock because when you look at this certificate, it says date is 08-01. I don't know if that's 2001 or 2008. I really have no idea, but they're still wrapped up in the factory plastic. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take them out now from the knife. So they usually always come in this plastic with the with the oil paper in there to help protect them. And I'll try to eliminate any glare if I can. So right out of the gate, they feel a little, they don't feel as smooth as a Sterrett. A little bit tight. And, and they're going back to zero. I kind of got away using a dial caliper all the time just because it's so easy around the machine shop to, 
get little fine chips in this rack and then it throws it out. Now that can be fixed pretty easy, which is something else that I'd like to show one day. But the digital is just a, for a caliper is something that I like to use. So I'm just giving it a little bit of movement to see if, if it's going to jump or not. It seems like it's going back pretty good. So there's your standard import six inch dial caliper right there. Black face. And it's going back to zero. So you can loosen this knob here and you can dial it in, line it up with that needle, which is usually what you'll see on dial calipers. It'll be off 25 or 50 thousandths and they have to turn the zero around to get it to line up. So I don't know, so far so good. This is a great tool to have for general measuring applications. Good for anybody if you just need a you know a good dial caliper to take some basic measurements with. One of the things that I did want to say before we keep go on with this is I always consider a, a caliper a, a tool of reference. I never use a caliper to get an exact reading. If you're trying to machine something very, very close tolerances, you know, within a thousandths. You need to be using micrometers to get you close. You can use calipers to get a general basic dimension of something. Use it to measure nominal dimensions. You know, if you're looking for a piece of round stock in the rack, you're measuring tubing to see what in, inside and outside diameters is, whatever. Just use calipers for point of reference, and you can use them to get you very close if you're drilling holes and that kind of stuff. But accurate measurements, you need to use something else. All right, so those are the calipers right there let's go ahead and take a look at the the zero to one inch micrometer comes with the paper to tell you how to read the micrometer all right and there it is so it's wrapped up in plastic as well all right got a foam case it comes with a wrench all right, so so far not too bad for 15 bucks, I guess. Now, I'll tell you, one of the reasons why I've never shown any of these kind of mics is because I just I don't have any of them. So this is my first mic that I've had that is a, a true made in China micrometer. The friction thimble has very little resistance to it at all. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have the same resistance as a, as a Starrett or a Michitoya. Let me go ahead and I need to clean. It's got, it's got grease on it, so I need, to, I need to clean the grease off. So now one of the differences I see in this mic compared to many of the others is that it actually does have a half a thousandths line in between each one of the graduations. So we'll do a really quick crash course here on how to read a mic. I know I've had guys ask, but uh, you see the zero there. Whenever that's run all the way in, there's your zero there. There's your horizontal line. So every time this barrel rotates one time around, that's gonna be 25 thousandths of an inch. Each of the, well, I would say each line is one thousandths, but this one's double. So there's actually 50 lines on there because it's giving you a half a thousandths reading. So that's 25, that's 50. And then now you have vertical lines there that's showing up. So each vertical line is showing 25 thousandths. So we're at 50, that's 75, and that's a hundred thousandths right there. If you wanted to read one eight diameter, you're going to be at 0.125 inches, which is 125. So we're at 100 now. So you go another revolution, 125. That would be one eighth of an inch right there. So I'm concerned about the friction thimble here. It just doesn't seem like it has the right amount of resistance to it. The uh, satin chrome seems to be pretty decent. I don't know if it's the same material as. Uh, as the higher quality tools. The lock works. 
And then this one has 10th readings on the top as well. That only shows 0 to 5, so you're going to have to you're going to have to read in between the two lines is what you're going to have to read there. All right, so there's our two there's our two basic tools that we're going to use right there is our is our mic and our and our dial caliper. Now he also sent this uh, anvil set right here. Now this is a uh, this is a really good example of cheap made in China import quality. This might be inexpensive to buy, but it just it just feels cheap. You know that one won't even fit in the case right there. We've got some rust on them. I don't know how old this is, but it looks like it's been sitting around for a pretty well, pretty good while. So you can use these attachments to get into to different grooves and things like that. But I'm not going to worry about this anvil set right there. But these just stick on the end of the end of the mic right there, and you can use these to measure different things. I put the Mitsutoya one-inch gauge block in my Sterrett mic holder right here just to kind of help us out. So I pulled out this Sterrett one-inch mic that I always use. This one was my granddad's and my dad's. They both used it. It's the Sterrett number 1230. This model is the one that's all stainless steel. It's been a, a very good mic, and it's just one of my go-tos. I, I, I always use it. So it has a nice firm friction thimble there to it. It's got the right amount of pressure, and it should be good to go. So we'll go ahead and take a measurement on this one inch gauge block right here. And let me see if I can get a good shot and uh, get it focused in. Camera seems to have a problem if something's behind it, so. What I was reading was it's right on zero. We are. Oh, sorry. It's really difficult trying to show this to you guys. And so I'm, what I'm seeing with this mic is one tenth under zero. That's just where it's at, one tenth under. All right, but it's got a good feel, it's a good mic. All right, so here is our um, here's our import made in China. Out of the box, let's we'll see how close it reads to a one-inch gauge block that we know should be good. It just the friction thimble just has very little feel to it, but it looks like it's lining up on zero. Look at that. See this pad? It's moving around. All right. So the horizontal zero line is just above the zero. So the next number, the one, that line there is lined up. So that's one tenth out. That's not too bad. The way this mic works is that you have half thousandths lines on the barrel. So depending on where it falls on this zero line, horizontal, you're either going to be, you know, minus five or plus five. So if you're over that half line, you automatically take five tenths and then you add whichever one of these line up with a, a line over on that side and you add it together. So it'll get the job done. It's not one that I would personally want to buy and use, but I think that that would be a decent mic for a guy that's on a very limited budget that needs to uh, pick up a mic, a measuring tool for, for uh, you know, getting, getting the job done. So I'm not, I'm not gonna talk bad about it, but it's just not my pick. But it'll get the job done. So there's a couple flaws to it. You know, this is moving around. I don't like the half thousandths lines myself, and I think the friction thimble is just not enough pressure on that compared to the higher end tools. All right, so a $15 mic compared to one that's probably, you know, if you was to buy this new, you're going to spend well over $100 for that one right there. You can probably pick these up used on eBay for, 
you know, 20, 30 bucks maybe, something like that. So there's a little bit of consideration for you there. So for the calipers, I'm actually going to show you a couple of them. This is a 6 inch Steerit dial caliper that I bought probably in 2009 or 2010. I actually bought these for my dad whenever I had uh, started working at Motion. And this particular model of, of Steerit caliper is the ones that are made in their China plant. So these are considered made in China. It's also their global series. If, you, if you're looking through a, a catalog and you see Sterrett tools and it says global series on it, that's the ones that are not made in USA. So this is one of those models right here. It is uh, still an expensive caliper. I believe I paid like $125 for it whenever I got it. So just keep that in mind. So this is one of their cheap one of their cheaper imported models that they offer okay so the difference is it's got a nice smooth feel to it it's just it's very smooth it doesn't feel as tight as this one right here too this one's got a little bit more firmness to it that may be okay all right so that's the that's the imported steret and then we have we have this one and this is the one that I had recently this year found uh, used at the flea market so it is the model 120A dial caliper that's made by steret here at, in uh, Athol, Massachusetts so this is their USA model you're going to spend more for this one right here. I don't know what the current price is and I forgot to look them up before I filmed this. I think these are going to run you around $150 maybe. But this is also, no I'm sorry, this is the model 120 or it's the uh, model number 1202. This is the global series and then the one that's made in USA is the 120A. They have a little bit more firmness there to the to the slide they don't move real easy the fit and finish on it just feels great that's the nice thing about higher quality tools whether it be a, a Steret or the Brown and Sharp something like that <clears throat> the Michitoya they just have a they have a very good fit and finish when whenever you compare them to the the cheaper models All right, so let's go ahead and pull our gauge block over, and we'll do our little measurements and see where the see how these things measure out. So we'll start with our made in China dial caliper. I'm trying to get it to where my light is not glaring. I'm looking in the camera here. Let's see. All right, so measuring that gauge block, it takes it right there to zero. All right, pretty good. Now, keep in, keep in mind, these are unused. These are still unused calipers. So here's our imported sterets. It's just kind of hard to square them up on the uh, the gauge block there, but it's going to zero. I like this one because it just seems smooth. All right, back to zero, and then we have our made in USA sterets that are the more expensive of the three. And up there to zero it goes. Okay. Well, the test shows that they, you know, measuring a one-inch gauge block, they're all giving you the measurement. But what we're trying to show there is that you can pick up this $15 caliper 
you usually see them in the tooling catalogs on sale for like 20 bucks this one happened to be picked up on ebay and they'll all get the job done they'll all give you your measurement that you need so it really just depends on your budget on what you're wanting to spend or what you can afford to spend if you're on a tight budget and you're just starting out pick you up some tools like this and get going <clears throat> and as you as you do better you get you get a raise you start making more money then you can step up to the higher quality tools if, if you choose so so that's going to be it for our little comparison uh, thanks JT for sending in the tools and uh, giving us the idea to go ahead and do a little comparison I would like to do another comparison with, with maybe some uh, <clears throat> with the scales because I like the quality of a steric rule should I say and I've seen some of the import rules and I do not like the quality that they're made in so maybe we'll get into that one pretty soon too okay Abby and I made it down to Ocean Springs Mississippi just now it's uh, doing a little Sunday adventure we we wanted to stop by the the Gator Ranch and do airboat tours but for some reason they're closed today uh, unexpected so We'll have to do that another weekend, but we come down here to Ocean Springs because we've never been here before. It's a neat little town. We just drove through the little main little downtown area. It's very cool, wasn't it's it? It's so cute. It's awesome. We're gonna. It's it's almost lunchtime, so we're gonna go right back up there in a little bit because there's a there's a museum there that we're gonna go to, and they have a lot of restaurants. So we're gonna go eat lunch there. But right now we're at a park down here on the water, which you can see behind me here. There's a. There's a park right over here. So we're just gonna walk around and check this park out and maybe walk out on the pier. We got a pier there, so we're just gonna, we'll just take a couple shots and show you what Ocean Springs looks like, all right? This out here is called the Mississippi Sound. Really pretty out here. So over the bridge there, that's Highway 90. And that is Biloxi, Mississippi on the other side where all those tall buildings are. That's where all the casinos are. Abby's checking out the puppies Yay. down there. We have lots of talks about puppies and yes, sure which one will be included in the household. A couple more boxers back there that I was looking at. Are you throwing for bait? No? No, I'm trying to get some sheep's head. Oh yeah? Okay. Yeah. They're out there. Is it going? Yep. See the little red light? <laughs> yeah. So bring it in here and look that way. So this is coming back north into Ocean Springs. This is sort of like the, I would call it like the downtown. The cutest little downtown ever. Yeah, it is really cool. It's <laughs> like the main little road. It's kind of like a canopy road, but you can tell it's like old fashioned and it's like Southern. A lot of it just seems to me like Southern living, the, the, the type of construction down here, like that house right there. Cute. But we're gonna, we're gonna come back up here to the little downtown area and there's lots of little restaurants so we're gonna we're gonna go to we have a couple picked out I, I think we have one that we're gonna go to we'll find out how good i am at picking restaurants well you're usually pretty good <laughs> we haven't hit a bad one yet this is the museum coming up here that was uh well it ain't right there i guess it's right here That's the museum we're going to hit. We'll see how happy your viewers are with me holding the camera. Maybe I, they... might, I might be driving from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Abby, Abby decided to be co-pilot and now uh, the cameraman today while I drive.
turn here. The office. Yes. The office bar. Doing a shot down there over here. A lot of businesses, like restaurants, and that's one I wanted to try right there. The mosaic. Okay, all right, so Government Street Grocery. Headed back home, we stopped out here at the shed again since it's on our way back here in near Ocean Springs, Mississippi. So we're gonna try some more barbecue today. <laughs> Just waiting on some barbecue? Waiting on some barbecue. All right. You got us a beer? Well, I got a beer anyway. I got so. sweet Yeah. <laughs> All righty. Lunch is served at the shed. So this time I got the brisket sandwich. So there's the smoked brisket with some sauce. Got their famous barbecue sauce, sweet potato fries. And what did you get today? Grilled cheese, macaroni, and the sauce and bread. That's right. She likes the bread and the barbecue, so she wanted a dipper yeah, there. <laughs> well, it looks good. Oh, yeah. It's a popular joint. I haven't given you an update in quite a while, so I wanted to go ahead and make a real short video to kind of talk about some plans that I got going on right here with the shop. So first of all, I just want to continue to uh, show my appreciation and thanks to all of my patrons out there, everybody that's kicking in a buck here and there and helping me out around here. It, it really does help out and I try to put all of that money uh, back into the shop and use it. So I've been saving it. You know, last thing we used it for was the computer and I've been saving it and now we're getting to the point. I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do because I've had a lot of things kind of thrown at me, a lot of ideas and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I've had, I had the idea that I was possibly ready to move, but I don't think it's time yet. You know, I need to find a place that I can get this guy to shop on it or a place where I can build a shop on it. So I think that's going to be stretched out a little ways uh, a while before I can do something like that. So I think what I wanted to do, what I've decided I'm going to do is go ahead and invest a little bit more here in my current shop and make use of this space out here as part of the shop. Right now it's really not being used. It's more of a storage area. I've got the, of course, I got the grilling area right here, you know. Uh, we got the air compressor down there, but that's really about all I've used that for out here. So I'm coming up with a plan and what I want to do is finish the enclosure out here. You know, we had the roof built uh, a couple of years ago and that's been really, really nice. So I've got a nice, I'd say foundation, but it's, it's the roof to work off of to finish do the enclosure here. So that's the plan that I've been working towards. I've been in touch with a contractor in the area and he is working on some numbers for me, you know, some estimates to get all this done. I want a complete job. I want to get this walled in. I want plumbing run over here. And in the back, the very back corner, I want a small bathroom, you know, just a small bathroom with a toilet and a sink in it. Uh, that's something that's needed in a shop. I don't have it, so we're going to put a little bathroom in it. And it'll be completely walled off. I want it, uh, the electrical run, insulation, and then finish the uh, ceiling and the walls, probably with sheet metal. And do it that route. 
So that's the idea. There's going to be a, uh, I want like an entry door right here somewhere, you know, a walkthrough entry door. And then right here where the end of the slab is, of course, we'll have like a roll up door right here. Uh, he's got a six foot wide roll up door that he's going to sell me for really cheap. So that's going to be going into the cost of everything. So I kind of wanted to give you uh, a shot of what's going on out here and give you my ideas. I got a lot of cleanup to do. I got a lot of stuff that I need to get rid of. So uh, you guys are going to hear about it first. So equipment and things that need to get gone. I'm going to get rid of this Craftsman um, bandsaw right there. I really have no need for that. I thought I wanted it when I when I got it, but I'm just I need to get rid of that. The uh, the saw is staying, of course. This forklift is no use to me anymore. The battery is completely shot in it, and those are really expensive to replace. So this right here is either going to be sold or scrapped. If I can't find a buyer, I'm going to load it up and take it to the scrapyard. That bandsaw right there, I'm probably just going to sell it. It's a it's a nice bandsaw that not a bandsaw I'm sorry a belt sander we're probably gonna just sell that get it out of here I need it I need the space I've got a this is the three ton you know electric chain fall that come from my old shop that was on the jib crane and I tried to sell that at one time I didn't have any buyers so I'm gonna drop the price that I was asking and try to sell this right here get that out of here and then this drill press right here is the one that I give Keith Rucker I, I told him a while back that he could have that and we just never kind of hooked up to get it to his place so we're, we're working on a plan for Keith to come and pick this up to take that to his shop and then this other drill press right here come from my old shop I wanted to keep it and use it because it's a nice drill press but you can see how much space that it's taken up you know nearly half of the slab out here so I think that I can continue to live without that drill press so I'm going to try to sell this for very cheap um, I posted it you know in my other video and I'm trying to put it on the Facebook thing and I'll probably do Craigslist and hopefully find a buyer you know just I'm looking for somebody just to offer me something you know put something in my pocket to go towards the shop here and get it out of here if I if I don't it's gonna go to the scrapyard so I'm gonna move this blower unit this is for the air conditioner notice come out of my old shop and it was a running unit when I took it out I'm just going to move that out there in the yard to get it out of the way. I've got a lot of cleanup to do. So this corner right in this area right here is where I'm planning on putting a bathroom. Uh, I don't know how wide you know, it'll be, but basically right in here I want to put a small bathroom with a toilet and a sink. And probably right in this area of the wall between the bathroom and the, the air compressor, I'm going to have a, a hole framed out in the wall for another big window unit air conditioner. So we'll do the, we're going to do insulation in the ceiling, insulation on the walls, and use uh, the metal, the same metal that's used on the carport down there, you know, gray in color for the outside. We're going to run it in a, a horizontal position all the way down the side. And on the inside, I'm thinking going with a white color metal on the inside. Uh, I know that kind of makes it more of a tin can, but... I think it's a it's a good option for a shop use anyway and I've seen other guys do it and it makes a really nice bright looking shop in there so I think that's what I'm going for so I've got you know I've just got junk and stuff collected out here from the past few years that I need to do something with so that's the plan I'm gonna start working on that and try to get it as much of the stuff that I don't need that, I, that I'm not using get it out of here and make as much space as I can so my idea for this space, let me get back here and kind of look at it a little bit. My idea for this space, this whole section of the shop, is going to be welding and fab, material storage, and grinding. So we'll move all of the, the grinders out here, the belt sanders, all that kind of stuff. We'll probably have the welders on this wall right here. The welding table will be somewhere you know maybe right here maybe back there a little way just somewhere right in this general area so uh, welding area out here we'll hang all the grinders and stuff up out here welders and then have the uh, the pedestal grinders and the belt sander stuff along this wall and we'll probably set the uh, the do-all somewhere right in the middle area 
and then have our material storage down this side of the wall right here. I may end up doing some fabricating, some uh, a different style of rack that's going to kind of hug the wall with multiple shelves that I can hang material on and maybe just get rid of that rack that's that I'm using right now. That thing is really heavy, it's hard to move, and there's a lot of wasted space in the middle right there. So we may do something different with that. So that's the that's the general idea of it. See so we got our entry door right there. And so we'll probably put an entry door maybe uh, maybe you know somewhere by this beam to kind of in line with that door right there. So that'll be the this will be like the new entry door coming in. And this is gonna be an expensive project, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be kind of high. So this will be like the first phase. Try to get all this done so that it's usable. We'll start using this as a shop. And then the next thing I would like to do is maybe get a new slab poured out here. Uh, you know, a working slab, you know, like a little driveway out here so that both doors will be connected with concrete and you know come out here a little ways have a little area you know run off for doing fabrication work and working on things you know that kind of stuff so we'll see how that goes that hopefully we can get to that later because uh, concrete is very expensive so that is the that is the plan right there and just wanted to you know talk to you guys and tell you what's been going on so we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna meet with the contractor for the first time next week and go over the numbers and the and the details and see where we're at and see what all I can handle. Uh, we may have to do it like in the two stages, you know, get a part of it done and then uh, come back and then finish it out. So we'll see, but I'll be sure to let you guys know as, as we move forward with this. I'm very excited and I, I have a lot of plans to, to get this shop in a better, more organized manner and get it more usable friendly so that I can actually start doing more work here and have a little bit more space to do it in so until next time we'll see you guys later